I am here with Ben from Them Teeth. Uh, thanks for joining us here today, Ben. Hey, thanks for having me, Craig. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Why don't you introduce yourself and tell us what you do in the band and then let us know uh, who else is in the band that uh, wasn't able to make it here today. Sure. Uh, my name is Ben Rayski. I play guitar and do vocals. Um, I wouldn't say sing <laughs> necessarily. Um, we have uh, Jason Harris is our bass player and Adam Petro is our drummer. And uh, yeah, that, that covers it. <laughs> So um, how did how did you guys form? You guys have been a band for a number of years now and yeah. also uh, associated with um, with Triple uh, I Industries as well. But you guys have been a band for at least, I want to say, six years. Yeah, six years. Um, Adam and I started jamming in 2013, the end of um, our bands had played together for a long time and happen to move to this side of Michigan uh, around the same time and both didn't have bands or anybody to play with. So uh, <laughs> of all the weird places to find a bass player. But uh, yeah, it worked out. We started, I think we played our first show in 2014, I believe, so. Okay. So um, you've got, so you are just now uh, releasing your first full length record, which is why we're chatting here today. Your new record is uh, out now on Triple I Industries and is titled yeah. Tired. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. It took a long time to get a full length out for us. Um, hence the title. <laughs> By the time <laughs> it actually got to that point, we were all pretty tired. <laughs> so, um, where did you, uh, where did you record, uh, tell us a little bit about recording it. So you, did you have everything put together and ready to go before the, the pandemic hit, or is this been a, have you been able to work through, you know, through the pandemic? A little bit together? of both. Um, we, we recorded ourselves, which came with its own trials and tribulations. Um, Adam actually ran a studio for a while in the Detroit area. So he had some gear and obviously knowledge and stuff. Um, so we recorded at our practice space and, you know, just knew that would be the most economical way to go. But halfway through that, we had a computer fail us. So um, that created a, you know, a bit of a delay there. And then we bought a new computer from a guy on Facebook Marketplace. And uh, the day he was going to ship it out to us, he had a brain tumor. Oh, my. Was hospitalized, like, you know, of all the random weird things that could happen. Um, so that delayed the process again as well. Um, so it was stuff like that that kept adding up that really delayed things quite a bit. But we did finish up recording the vocals right before lockdown happened here and right before, okay. you know, the main. So we did all the mixing and stuff over, uh, you know, file trading and, and whatnot. But at least the bulk of everything was recorded before lockdowns happened. Luckily. Okay. And then um, so... Uh, you also have been so it's being released on triple i industries which is yep. uh, the label here in milwaukee you guys have been associated with them they've released several of your um there is the cassette come succumb to life and yep. um I, I don't recall what media was on but they also released knuckle drager for you guys how did you guys yes, get involved that was with a them? okay how um, did you get involved with them they actually reached out to us after we put our demo up on Bandcamp. um yeah, I don't really know how they, they found us per se, you know, maybe just trolling through or checking tags or whatnot. I'm not sure, but, uh, but they reached out to us and said they were interested in doing something. And, you know, we were pleasantly surprised by that. Um, I checked out, I don't even know how much they had out really at that point in time, but I know one of the first things I stumbled onto was, uh, was volunteer. Right. And was instantly like, yeah, that's our brethren. You know, we're, I can tell already sonically we're like, you know, in the same wheelhouse. So, that got mm -hmm. me excited. Got us all pretty excited about that. Yeah. So, um, and you've played, you've played, you've been over over to Milwaukee to play their Triple I Fest. Yes, every year we've played every Triple I Fest, and sadly, obviously, this year our <laughs> annual trip got you know got uh, shoved aside. But mm -hmm. yeah, yep, every year we played, and it was it's always been a blast, man. Those guys are really good friends of ours, and. Everybody, you know, the whole label roster really is all tight group of dudes that, you know, get along well and have a good time. So, 
So you, and you, I would so you, I imagine then kind of gotten to know the other bands and and other yeah. other people through coming coming over here through the festival or yeah just, yeah um with, we've done some like light touring you know just some weekends and stuff with okay. dudes and more brides who are now work okay. party um did the same with volunteer when they were still a band um and then yeah just kind of you know became friends with obviously uh yeah most of the roster just because we see them at least once a year and play you know right. So um, tell me a little bit about this, this, I guess, the songwriting process that you guys go through and writing songs for the new, for the new album. Tell well, these, these songs, some have been around quite a while. Um, there's actually, uh, you know, a good handful of these songs are on Succumb to Life, a live version of them from a triple I industry recording that yeah. Marty did. Um, so some of those have been around quite a while. Um, nothing too crazy i mean basically we just kind of are the kind of guys who get in a room and jam together and kind of see what happens um so yeah i mean you know nothing we're we've already started demoing for a next album which oh. <laughs> <laughs> has been coming together pretty quickly because of you know not being able to play for a good you know six months there uh not being able to get together if, when we were back together again starting mm -hmm. to play uh, a lot of stuff started flowing pretty quickly so um I, I can tell you this time around demoing, it's going to go a lot quicker than it did last time, just because we were always trying to write and balance playing shows and, you know, okay. being active, but obviously with not having to be active in front of a crowd or playing shows or uh, that aspect being taken away from us, obviously, as it has mm -hmm. to all musicians right now, um, you know, kind of allowed us more focused time to do some writing and really like buckle down in that regard. So. So, so you, you mentioned that a number of these songs are, you know, were, are recordings of, of live songs pulled from the, the Succumb to Life, which I think those, those were live recordings from actually playing at Triple I Fest. Yes. Right. If I recall correctly. Um, yep. So did you reach out to Triple I when you were putting this together? And did you, did you just, I guess, after having put out a number of EPs and, you know, some singles, did you just kind of have feel that you had enough material to put together an album or was there? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think the basis, like I said, it took us a long time to record. So I think the basis of the songs of what we knew was going to be the album was kind of mm -hmm. already always there, but it kind of became a running joke, especially with the guys in triple I it's like, wait, when's that uh, LP ever going to manifest, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, Oh yeah you know, someday we hope. Um, but originally the plan was that we were going to put it out on vinyl with a Detroit label called um, Corpse Flower Records, who okay. uh, the, the guy who runs that is a really good friend of mine that I've known for, you know, 20 years. Um, and he was going to do it, but he decided in um, the last year that he was going to cease operations. So he was going to honor the last two releases he had um, but then with everything that happened with pandemic and stuff, he just kind of decided he was going to not do that as, as well. So um, when that actually did fold, um, I instantly reached out to, to Marty and Fran and, and just was like, hey, would this be something you guys would still be interested in doing? <laughs> or, you know, uh, it's been a long road to get here, but we landed on doing um, the CD with those guys. It seemed like something that made the most sense. Just, you know, get it out there. Um, on a you know reasonably priced format since we're not going right. to be able to play in front of anybody you know so uh it seemed like the good way to go and it came together really quick once we got involved with those guys it's like you know it was like a well-oiled machine from that point so okay and then did did they help you with the layout and the and the and the and the graphics for the um for the cover art um cover art stuff was stuff we had cooked up already yeah. uh, at least a good idea for i took all the photos um okay. for that but yeah, I said, you know, took send sent him over to Marty and he, you mm -hmm. know, he's the layout master that he is. So he right. laid it all out, made it look great. <laughs> yeah, they yeah, they they have kind of all of that in how you know, the, a lot of talent in house there to help out with that kind of yes. thing. Yeah, big time. So. I mean, typically in the past, all the all the other releases we've had for the most part, well, all the triple I ones I can say have always been friends on it. So mm -hmm. uh, the first time that we, you know, veered off of that path as far as that no 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 offense fran <laughs> right yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah we just wanted we had an idea of something we kind of wanted to try for the artwork and so we're really happy with how it turned out we, we were pretty stoked on it so so you're you're now demoing new songs do you feel like you you put together you know do you just kind of 
as you mentioned, you guys jam out and just kind of work through things as a group. Do you right. feel the, the songs kind of come together and feel like an album or you just are putting them, you know, you're kind of just working out with a group of songs and then put together what feels like it should, you know, kind of group together what feels like should be put together as an EP. Yeah, I think this time around, I think we're going to be a lot more conscientious on that. I don't care okay. as much last time because I feel like last time the songs were kind of written in batches. And so okay. day we kind of had to, you know, coalesce it into an album where I feel like this time around, I think we're kind of being a lot more conscientious, like, hey, let's have, you know, maybe a couple mid-tempo songs, but let's also try to mix in some faster songs or even some slower songs or, you know, so I think this time around, the focus will definitely be a little more, uh, you know, variety in the songwriting and probably look at it more as an album from the get-go as opposed to okay. compiling one at the end, yeah. Right. So you, yeah, because you've been pulling, I guess, pulling songs. Um, do you feel like the newer songs stand out on this album since you've had a lot of older songs? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think uh, they're all a pretty good mix, I think, across mm -hmm. the board as far as like stylistically where we were trying to come from at that right. point in time. Um, I do feel like some of the newer songs too, you know, in that writing process, were definitely the stronger songs on there. Um, the lead off track on the album uh, was a later written song. Um, and honestly, the last song on the album was one that we had just kind of like crummy demos of and never even really played out. We just decided, hey, let's try to make this happen. And so, I mean, really the first time that song ever really came together was for the record itself too. So oh, really? okay. there's some stuff like that. We just kind of wanted to try since we had the time to do it. Um, like I said, next time, I think we're going to be a little more diligent as far as, you know, looking at it as an album, as a whole from the get go yeah. and doing it. Right. And, yeah. and kind of crafting songs around one another. Yes, exactly. So, exactly. so you, you guys are releasing this album here in you know november of 2020 and you're not going to be able to tour on it any you know right. at least in the foreseeable future what uh, um you know which is a challenge in, in and of itself but what are, what are your kind of your plans for for the music other than just releasing it to the world um it's funny because i feel like we've already toured on this okay. oh, right. <laughs> with as yeah. long as it, some of the songs have been around mm -hmm. i know that's probably you know not a great way to sell it um but i mean I feel like we did really play these songs out quite a bit. So right. hopefully people who do get the album and have seen this play a couple of times have a degree of familiarity there to some of the mm -hmm. tracks already, um, which maybe makes it not feel as important to get in front of people to play these songs. Um, I know that we wanted to try to do some live streaming thing at some point. So hopefully that's something that will come together for us. Um, okay. But yeah, I mean, I think, at this point, we're kind of, like I said, just because we know we can't play out. So we're trying to look at the next thing we can do. Okay. We'll still be, you know, creative. Because at the end of the day, I mean, that's what it is for us. It's mm -hmm. fun to get together as three guys who, you know, love similar music and like to play together and be creative together. Um, so in that regard, I guess we are just thinking, well, let's continue the one thing we can control right now since we can't right. control the outside factors. Um so, yeah, I, I, I would like to try to do some kind of live stream thing. I know we even kind of humored, like, you know, is there a way to have, like, a private party of sorts that could be safe or whatever? But mm. I, I don't know how the numbers are there. But here right now, they're exploding and that's right. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, it seems like it's kind of bad all around the Midwest right now. Yeah. Um, really. So so being a band that, that does spend a lot of time playing out, do you feel like, you know, the songs end up getting crafted at all in in the live space where you know you're you're kind of relying on feedback you know do you do you change the songs based off of how they play how they how they are adapted to to the live setting as opposed to just the practice space yeah i feel i feel like some of the songs had had went through some changes in that regard um you know it just felt maybe some parts here didn't you know fell a little flat or maybe went a little longer than they should have or okay uh, so yeah, I think I think there probably is some revision like that. Um, it's funny though because you know you you don't want to think that way, but you do as far as editing songs go. But I know that sometimes not caring about that as much, you can get some other things. I I was 
mentioned it to somebody before, but like even recording some songs that maybe we felt didn't go well live necessarily, mm-hmm. like, you know, maybe weren't very strong in a live setting. Right. Now when I listen to them on the album, I feel like the recorded version was much stronger than we ever performed it live, if that makes sense. And right. I found that interesting, you know, I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. Like this is one of my more favorite songs now, even though live it kind of was always like a bit of a challenge or, you know what I mean? Yeah, because you have a little bit more time to work, maybe work on it and a little bit more time to kind of maybe, you know, get the part just right. Whereas in a live setting, you know, you only have that one shot. at Right, right. Exactly. And if adrenaline's, you know, flowing through you and it's, uh, you know, if it's a trickier song or, you know, it can get out of control tempo wise or something like that, then it can, you know, even if it doesn't sound like it to the crowd, to you, it's like, oh man, we play that horrible. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's a lot, there's a, you know, you have a lot more control over the environment in the, in the studio. So you can do maybe a little bit more experimenting and. Yes. And, and we started doing that. I hope that we continue that with the next, you know, the next time we record on, um, we started bringing in a little bit more of like some experimenting, adding some extra layers and stuff that we okay. typically hadn't really done before. And that was actually where it got the most fun, I think, recording for us in this time around. Maybe added was a little it? more time than it should have. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah. But it was cool. <laughs> adding some sonic sonic textures to the yes. to the end result. Mm-hmm. So the, the new album is titled Tired by Them Teeth. Your bandcamp page is themteeth.bandcamp.com. It also was available at triple I dot bandcamp.com yep um and i assume you guys are where else can everybody find you uh facebook you know typical facebook and instagram um that's where we keep up the most with with okay. posting there um yeah yeah that's where you can find us uh all physical cds right now can be bought through triple i we're, we're just directing people towards them to get those sales so um yeah Sounds good. Well, thank you very much for for joining us today. Uh, We're going to play a couple more songs from Them Teeth. Awesome. Thank you, Craig. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.